We're going to have a look now at the relationship between rational exponents and thirds. And before we get there, let's just quickly revise. The definition of a rational number is it's any number that can be written as a fraction, so a over b, and the numerator and the denominator in that fraction have to be um, elements of the set of integers. Okay, so a and b have to be integers. In other words, numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. Okay, so a rational number is a fraction, and a third, and another name for a third is a radical, is any root of a non-perfect root. So, for example, if you are finding the square root of 10, because 10 is not a perfect square, its square root will be a third. The cube root of 6, for example, 6 is not a perfect cube, so its uh, value will, will not be an exact number, it will be an irrational number. Okay, so those are our uh, thirds and rational numbers. So if we just consider something like the square root of x to the power of 6. When we're finding the square root, we want to find the number that we've multiplied by itself to give us the value under the third sign. So if you are multiplying x to the power of something multiplied by another x that's exactly the same, and you're getting an answer of x to the power of 6, Remember that when you multiply powers with the same base, you would add the exponents together. So if you want to find what two numbers you added together to give you 6, you need to divide 6 by 2. So it means that your square root of x to the power of 6 is x cubed. If you want to find the square root of x to the power of 4, again, you need to look at what is half of the value of that exponent, and that is x squared. And the same thing applies even if your exponents are odd numbers, for example, x to the power of 5. If you wanted to find out what the square root of that would be, you would need to work out the value of 5 divided by 2. And we can actually just leave that as a fraction. So this is where we get our rational exponent from. So in exponent form, it looks like that. And in third form, it looks like this. So we can see that there is a relationship between the third form and a rational exponent. If we just look at some cubes, for example, the cube root of x to the power of 12. x to the power of 12, if we want its cube root, we're now looking for a number that we've multiplied together by itself three times in order to get x to the power of 12. So we're going to need to divide the exponent by 3 in order to find out what it was that we added 3 times to get 12. So it will be x to the power of 4. So the cube root of x to the power of 12 is x to the power of 4. Same thing if the um, exponent is not a perfect, um, uh, sorry, rather not a multiple of 3 for something like x to the power of 7, we would simply take the 7 and divide it by 3. So we get x to the 7 over 3 is exactly the same as the cube root of x to the power of 7. So if we just have a look at what happens between the third form and the rational exponent form, we can see that the type of root gives us the denominator of the fraction in each case. The square root of x to the power of 5 simply or became x to the power of 5 over 2, and the cube root of x to the power of 7 became x to the power of 7 over 3. In each case, the type of root, remember when there's nothing filled in, we, assume, we know that it's a square root. The type of root gives us the denominator in the fraction, and the exponent in, of the rational exponent was the exponent that the base was being raised to underneath the third sign. So we can generalize this relationship. So in general, if you have the mth root of x to the power of n, you can rewrite that in rational exponent form as x to the power of n over n. Remember, denominator is the root uh, type that you're dealing with, and the numerator is whatever the exponent on the n was. Let's have a look at a few more examples. Number one, write with a rational exponent, y to the power of cube root of y to the power of 6. So we know that we've got to divide the exponent by the type of root in order to get it as a rational exponent. 6 over 3 can simplify and it becomes y squared. Number 2, x to the power of m, the fourth root of that. So it'll become x to the power of m over 4. The exponent becomes the numerator in the rational exponent and the type of root becomes the denominator. 
Number three, the square root of 4x cubed y to the power of 8. The square root of 4 can be found, it's 2. The square root of x cubed, 3 over 2 doesn't simplify, so we can just leave it as x to the power of 3 over 2. And y to the power of 8 divided by 2 is y to the power of 4. In your homework book are some examples for you to try, so please pause the video here. Number one, let's first deal with the brackets underneath that third sign. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16 because it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So that gives us 16a to the power of 4. Square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of a to the power of 4 is a squared. Number two, the square root, the cube root of xy. Remember that both x and y have an exponent value of 1 in that case. So it becomes x to the third and y to the third. You could also write it as xy all to the power of a third, but then it is always better to simplify and remove the brackets by distributing that exponent over between the x and the y. Number three, it's going to be n to the power of y over x. 